Today is the day we start the project that I've been working on for over two years. We are picking up my supercar killer. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Grace McTiger and this is Living Like Gray where we build cool cars and drive them here on the channel. So if that sounds cool to you, be sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss any of the awesome content that we'll be putting out in the near future. If you guys saw the last video, I picked up a new car on the channel, a 2007 Chevrolet Cobalt SS and that did not go well. Pretty much everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. The transmission gave out, the AC wasn't working, and then the car was overheating the whole way home. Because of that, basically we're gonna need to tear down the car and rebuild it from the ground up. But luckily I planned for this and we are going to do something completely different than any of you expected. Let's go ahead, head over here and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Now this is the supercar killer, the DF Goblin. So behind me is a kit car called a DF Goblin and it is based on a Chevy Cobalt chassis and motor. So this is one that they have built. This is actually not my car. This is an example car that they have here at the compound here in Red Oak, Texas. Basically, this is kind of what my car is gonna look like in the end. My car is actually right here. Now I call it a car, but really this is just the frame. The actual car is the Cobalt that we have back at the garage where we're gonna start disassembling it here soon. This is what it will end up looking like. Now if you notice the difference between this one and the one I just showed you, this one has a full cage. So basically we can do a lot more with the full cage and it's a little safer if we wanted to get more into track use. Now the downside of that is you do lose that more open cockpit feel, but I think the full cage is gonna be really, really cool in the end. We're gonna pick this up today and take it back to the garage, but I wanna show you what they do here in Red Oak, Texas at the DF Goblin compound. So we're gonna give you a tour of what they do here, and then at the end, we're gonna actually end up driving this one that you see right here. We're gonna drive this, tell you what it's all about, tell you how it feels, and then we'll see if I made the right choice in building this kit. Let's go ahead and get into it. So we're here in the welding and fab shop here at the DF Goblin compound. And I can tell you a little bit about everything here, but the people who can really tell you is Ray. Ray is the lead welder here at the DF Goblin company, complex, whatever you would like to call it. So I'm gonna have Ray tell you all about what they do here, starting with the welding process. So sure. go ahead. Well, initially we'll get the pipe in. Of course we buy it in bulk. And then from there, it'll, depending on what we need to do with it, come to the CNC uh, plasma cutter. And uh, this is plasma cutter which we built ourselves. And so it uh, has a CNC program for each individual tube that's here on the shelves. So we'll all get cut. And then depending if it needs to be uh, bent or not, then we'll move it over to the, the CNC pipe bender. And then we'll, uh, we'll bend those. And we have a program again for each individual pipe that, uh, that needs bending if not. Basically you get the raw metal, you run an automated program to cut it up into the exact pieces you need, bend it, and then you can take that over to welding, correct? Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. So, and then basically the next station would be welding, right? And sure. And this is where you actually weld up all the pieces and the frame and make it into a goblin. Correct. So, awesome. Yeah, so we, uh, this is our staging area for the pipe that, that we need. So it all has part numbers on there and it's kind of a shadow board. So that way we have all the pieces that we need so we don't, you know, forget anything. But yeah, so we load it up, load all the parts. And then uh, from there it goes to this first jig. And so we'll load it up, pull our parts, and then kind of we go through and weld out as much as we can on this jig. So this is just a big welding jig where all the, it holds all the parts in place and you do the weld. Correct, yeah, so we build it from the floor up as far okay. as we can, and we weld as much as we can from the angles in which we can reach. And then from there, it'll go over to the rotisserie. And from here, we'll finish it out. There's a few other parts that get welded onto it, smaller piece parts. And of course, it's the rotisserie, that way we can reach every part. Okay, so this is the beginning stages of a DF Goblin. Like, this is where it all starts. That's it, yep. So now I, I kind of know the answer to this because I've been through the process, but for the people watching, how long does it take you to do that whole process from cutting all the way to where this one is right here? Right, so when it first comes in, what we'll do, we'll usually cut everything and bend it in bulk. So, you know, we, won't, we don't want to do one piece at a time, obviously. So we'll, we'll spend about a week, you know, just filling the shelves, getting all that ready to go. And then uh, we'll bend what we need to get bent. And then from there, we'll start welding them out. And from the time we load up to the time we finish, it's about 12 hours worth of welding. So 12 hours worth of welding. And then the next step after that is it moves into where? Correct. So then we have inventory in here. And so we'll, we'll stock it in here. So 
So we'll put it in here and then once the, once the order comes through and the girls have everything ready to go, this is just one of the pieces that get put in the warehouse and the girls will uh, load it up with all the other components that they've ordered and they'll be ready to ship. So you guys have two different reel options. You have a closed frame and an open frame. Right. What's the time difference in welding, like a closed frame versus an open frame? Not much. I mean, it's very similar. It's just a few different parts. Obviously, this one here is the full, full cage, easy entry. Yep, I, I remember that. I, I opted for the not easy entry, the normal size, right. and I, I checked it out out there, and I, I think it's gonna be a little difficult to get in yeah, and out. Yeah, it takes a little, a little bit to get used to. So, yeah, this one here is the open, Cage, but, but it has full, full door bars. Full door bars. Okay, right. so I assume the full door bars are a little safer, a little more rigid, but sure. you know, yeah, a little so. bit more protection. Uh, this one here is a full cage, but it has double door bars. This one here. Yeah. So it's yeah. got two, uh, two of those. So how how many of you do you, you think you end up building per year? I know you guys. Uh, my end is number four eighty eight. How many do you end up, you think, welding maybe right. per month? It just depends year. on the workflow. I mean, you know, when the demand's there, it's constant. I mean, we can push out two and a half, three a week. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, but then when, you know, the water slow down, of course, production slows down, so we move on to something else. We'll focus, you know, our power on the control arms or something yeah, else. Because I mean, yeah. there's a lot of other components that, that go with just the frame. I mean, there's okay. other components that go with it. So. so do you guys hold an inventory and wait for an order or is it made to order every single time? We try to keep a little bit of everything we can make in stock, that way it's available. So it's a quick turnaround rather than Right, so if the customer wants it sooner, we can get it to them sooner. Some customers want to wait a little bit and that's fine, we'll store it for them for a little bit. Okay, awesome. And so, uh, so it kind of depends on the, what the customer wants. Awesome, well, okay. so. After this, it moves over to what's the next step after this stage right here? So it would be the uh, warehouse. So, okay, yeah. so we'll hop over to the warehouse and check out what's there. So thank you, Ray, for checking us, showing us around here. And uh, I look forward to seeing more stuff that you make. All right. So nice let's go check you. out the inventory and other processes that they got here. Okay, so the next step after they've made the frame is it comes in here to start prepping it to deliver it to the customer. So here are some of the frames that they have here. Some of these are like semi done or mostly done frames. That one back there is even powder coated because they're actually building their next goblin is what they were telling me. And it's gonna be a turbo goblin. Ours is gonna be a supercharged. So it's a little different, but the turbos make even more power than the supercharged. So who knows, maybe we'll upgrade to a turbo later, but trust me, you guys are gonna love the sound of the supercharger. Once the frame is made and the customer wants to take delivery, they bring it in here. As you can see, all these frames are being prepped for delivery. So once they do that, they assign a number to your goblin. Mine's number 488. And so that way it helps determine like which goblin is which and what parts go with it. Once it gets to this point, they start assembling the parts and packages, which is this section over here. So they have a bunch of exhausts, as you can see, and a bunch of other components that will be put into the kit, which we'll show you mine in a second that already has the components all put together. Here are a bunch of already pre-packaged inventory, basically, of their components. We have some CNC cut parts. We have like the coolant tubes here, uh, more CNC cut frame pieces, maybe wing mounts, intercooler mounts, and stuff like that hard brake lines, all of this are labeled with their inventory system so it's easy to keep track of what goes next into the kit. Now over here they explain that these are a bunch of raw components that they take and bag up so it's easy to follow in the instruction videos that they have on how to build the kit. So they take the pieces from here and then once you get down here a little more, you'll see the final prepackaged parts. So like this that has a bunch of pieces together which will go into the tail lights, for example. This one right here is for the brake re reservoir adapter kit. And so this has a bunch of components that you use when you're building your Goblin. Again, these are home built absolute monsters of vehicles. And so they need to make the process as easy as possible. And I really think they've done it. Like this is such an amazing compound for such an amazing car that they have developed. One of the reasons why I chose these guys is they are local to me. They are here in Red Oak, Texas, which is just south of Dallas, which is where we are located. And so it's gonna be super convenient to be able to call them up, ask for questions, ask for help, just make this process as easy as possible. Also, they have a whole YouTube build series, which we'll link to that playlist down below in case you guys want to see what it's like to build the goblin. Well, anyway, that's a tour of the compound. Let's go ahead and see if we can drive this one that they got out here and show you guys what that's kind of like. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and take a ride in this. This is Adam. So Adam's one of the founders here at DF Kit Car. He's gonna take me for a ride. And then he said, uh, if we're good, we can drive it ourselves. So we're inside the car. I got all harnessed in here. 
I can already tell this is crazy. The wheel right there as we're driving, that is a totally crazy experience. So this one is a supercharged. It is a little windy because it is an open cockpit. So if you can't hear me too well, I do have a mic on right here, but we'll see how much that helps. So we've only gone about like 100 feet, but this thing already feels just insane. It is super small and you can see pretty much everything. Now again, this one is supercharged like the one that we have. All right, so this is an 06, ours is an 07. You can hear the supercharger. I didn't know it was that crazy. Holy crap. Okay, so this is the DF Goblin. We went ahead and pulled over, stopped for gas. My initial impressions are this thing is just absolutely insane. I do like the wheels that they have on this. I'm not a huge fan of the stock Cobalt wheels, but the wrap and everything that they have done to this really inspires me to do some really cool stuff like this to our Goblin when it's done. We're not gonna do a red frame though. We are doing a black frame but the supercharger just sounds so cool in this thing. Seeing everything exposed with the linkages and the motor, this really is a total experience. So we're back in the Goblin. Just the one little pull that we've done so far is absolutely insane. Hearing that supercharger whine behind you and seeing the wheel right here is absolutely nuts. Like some people would have buyer's remorse over a big purchase like this. After riding in one, there is absolutely no way I could see anyone having buyer's remorse. This thing is like the ultimate test drive experience because it's so different from anything else you've ever ridden in. Okay, I think I made a right choice with getting a supercharged one. Just the, the sound alone. Yeah, the sound is great. <laughs> and it's like right behind you too, so you hear it the whole time. Like the only downside to this is it's very hot because we're in Texas, but nothing can ruin this experience. Like even the heat, and this is so fun. enough to let us actually drive the Goblin today because we already placed an order for one. Normally they do not let people drive this. So if you come here, one, they're probably gonna say, get out of here, like make an appointment. But two, they're probably not gonna let you drive this. But since we're recording it and we've already placed an order for a kit and we're picking it up today, he said I could take it around the block. So we're gonna take it easy, but I wanted to just give you guys my thoughts on what it feels like to first ever drive one of these kits. Already I can tell this is way like, stiffer in every way than the Cobalt. Their shifter kit is, feels super clicky and the brakes are super stiff. So like just tapping the brakes, it immediately engages. Already it feels like so quick and I'm barely on it. The throttle is super responsive. The gear shift feels like it's a gated manual almost, even though it's a cable driven transmission. Now it is kind of windy. I do have a mic on, so I hope you guys can hear me, but if not, I hope you guys just enjoy the experience and enjoy the ride. Man, this thing is small. <laughs> yeah, it is. So another reason not to do anything crazy, a police officer just passed us. But even easing into it, it's like, what the heck is this? <laughs> this is nuts. You're like seeing the wheel out there while you're driving, Holy crap. It has very little visibility backwards because the mirrors are kind of small. Holy smokes! This thing is crazy! Like the smells you get, the like everything about this is just crazy. And even though it doesn't have AC, you got the breeze in your hair, so and what else do you need? Like you don't need AC with this. You're fine. 
So I'm gonna ease into it a little bit, get that supercharger wine hopefully. Again, I'm not gonna do anything crazy. I'm not gonna spin the tires. I'm not gonna do anything nuts, but I do wanna hear that supercharger so you can hear it. So that's what we're gonna do. Just ease into it a little bit and head back. We didn't go very fast there. We just eased into it. But hearing that noise is such a selling point for me with this thing. This is why I went for the full cage. <laughs> it's pretty dang scary. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna pull over, turn around, bring it back. That was crazy in every sense of the word. No regrets buying this thing. This is such a pleasure that like, huge shout out to everybody here at DF Goblin, Ray, Adam, Lonnie, everybody who made this possible. Huge shout out because like, this is a affordable exo car that you can build in your garage and they made it super easy to do so. And everyone so, here is so nice. Oh, everyone here is so nice. Like this is one of the best experiences I've ever had, especially recently with all like the bad luck we've had, like this is great. So it's a good sign for me at least and reaffirms my decision. Now we're gonna pick ours up, which is right here. This is how it comes as a kit. Everything you need, gas tank, I assume exhaust, like some pieces here and then the actual kit itself. So we're gonna load this in the back of Logan's truck and we're gonna take it to get powder coated and call it a day. So let's go ahead and go do that. So we are here at Precision Powder here in Crandall, Texas. We went ahead and got the frame unloaded and we are basically going to leave it here for a week. They're gonna coat it in black, like a gloss black powder and we will pick it up in a week. In the meantime, we're gonna go back to the garage and the next couple videos will be tearing down the donor cobalt that we showed in the last video. And we're gonna get it ready to put into this frame when it's done. So hopefully in a week's time, we can get it all torn down, ready to go. And then we'll start the assembly and hopefully in a couple weeks, maybe two or three weeks, we'll have the full thing built out. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.